Welcome to Chemistry Travels. So many of you who are listening to me right now would either be in search of a PhD position or maybe you have plans of doing your PhD after your master's. But the time it takes for us to find the right position and to start our PhDs, it's not the same for all of us, right? Like some of us, we might already have an offer in hand while we're doing our master's itself and soon after our MSc, we just move on with our PhD studies. And there can be few others who take some time, like few months after their MSc to find the right offer and within few months, they are good to start. But there can be yet another set of people who actually take quite a long time to start their PhDs or to reach their goal of finding the right position. When I say quite a long time, I mean to say like many months or maybe even years. And this eventually creates a gap between their MSc and PhD, right? So I thought I'll just talk to you all about certain possibilities of using this gap effectively so that it can actually aid you with your PhD hunt. So once you've decided that you want to do your PhD, the next important decision that you need to make is whether you want to do your PhD within India or you want to do it somewhere abroad in a foreign university. And depending upon your choice, you have got to work accordingly. Because the admission criteria for PhD positions in India is mostly subject oriented while the admission criteria to get an offer from a foreign university is mostly research oriented, right? So first let's consider the case when you want to do it within India. So as you all know, if you want to get into any PhD program within India, you will have to clear our national entrance exams like CSIR NET or GATE or some state universities and colleges might have their own entrances but in all these cases you are being tested for your subject knowledge that is how good you are at your subject how strong is your basics or your foundation that is what matters and even if you have cleared these entrance exams you still would have to undergo an interview process where again you will be tested for your subject knowledge right and if you have not cleared these exams during your masters you will definitely have to take a break after your masters sit and prepare for these exams and then appear for them so for these preparations you might either choose some coaching where you will go for some online coaching or offline coaching based on upon your choice or if you feel that you can do it on your own it's just that you need some time to sit and prepare for yourself so you might even go for self-study and if you feel that along with your preparation for your exams that you want to earn something for yourself you want to have a job of yourself you want to have an income for yourself I would always suggest that you go for jobs that are in line with your preparation that is something that can help you with your preparation so what are those jobs I would say teaching is the best thing that you can do when you are preparing for some exams so when you are learning for teaching, you actually learn it better. When you learn something to teach someone else, you learn the topic much better and it can actually help you with your exams as well, right? So for that, you can take up tuitions, like you can have your own self tuitions or maybe you can join some teaching academies. These days we have a lot of academies that require MSc graduates for teaching at various levels like school level, college level, for entrance exams and many more are available. So find out those opportunities and try out some teaching related jobs or maybe you can even try some guest lecture positions which are for some short term like for a few months or maybe a few year, one or two years. So go for some teaching related jobs so that your uh, preparation for your examination be becomes easier and be in touch with your professors and your department so that you can let them know that you are in search of such positions so that if they come across some positions or they are in need of students for teaching they might contact you since they know you better right so this is what you can do when, when you are prepared having a gap between your MSc and PhD and you are trying for your PhD within India and the next case is when you want to do your PhD in some foreign university. So as I already told, it is research oriented and they look for your research experience. That is whether you have the experience of working in a research laboratory, what are the different instruments you have handled, what are the different experimental techniques that you know or do you have any paper publications, these all matter to them. And so we've got to work on these and boost our CV in such a way that it is appealing for these positions, right? 
So first thing I would suggest is to check with your MSc project guide and see if you can continue with your MSc project even after your masters work on the same project for some more time because in most cases our MSc project is done towards the end and last minute we do it in a haste and it may not turn out to be a good one right so if you actually get some more time after our MSc to work on it and bring it a good form or a good shape and maybe even come out with a publication out of it so it can actually be of great help for our applications but if they cannot let you be there for long no issues we still have a lot of positions outside in several labs like we have project positions we have JRF positions or research assistant positions in IITs ISOs or several CSIR labs so you, you will definitely come across several advertisements for project positions where pro students uh, MSc students are required MSc graduates are required for several projects you can always keep uh, track of these applications apply for these positions and attend their interviews and if you get them yes definitely they are great opportunities for gaining some real research experience and even if you have not cleared your gate or net they still consider you and the only difference is you will be paid slightly lower than those who have cleared these exams but apart from that the research experience or the exposure that you're going to get from there is the same and even if you they, they do not have an advertisement you still can go through their websites find professors or scientists who work in your field of interest and mail them to and tell them that you're looking for such positions and ask they ask them if they have any positions so if they have any positions in hand if they are in need of students they'll definitely contact you so do not hesitate to mail them to see if they have anything available for you okay and if you feel that you do not want to be a student like you do not want to have that title of a student like you don't want to be in an academic lab you still have an opportunity of gaining research experience by working in some companies that is working in their R&D sectors research and development sectors so uh, they, they do hire MSc graduates for their R&D sectors where you can definitely gain research experience especially in the bulk level like in uh, organic sector or medicinal chemistry related food science related lot of opportunities are available apply for these jobs and get one of those get the experience that you want okay so apart from this what I would like to tell is about what I did after my MSc so after my MSc I got an opportunity to work in one of the R&D labs that come under the Department of Science and Technology DST so it is the Adv International Advanced uh, Research Center for Powder Metallurgy and New Materials. Uh, in short, it is called ARCI. And they do have a wonderful program for ma master students, master graduates that is called GTP or Graduate Training Program. It's a one year program where you will be working under some scientist on a project and you will be gaining your research experience for one year and it does have a stipend. And they do have a lot of uh, good facilities and you get to handle a lot of instruments you will get really okay you learn to do research independently you learn a lot from there and I can tell that from my personal experience like this a lot of research experience real research will, uh, experience you will be definitely getting from there but the only problem is that they do not have an advertisement for this position so how do you get this position it's just that you'll have to mail them go through their website find scientists that you are interested in find in the works that you're interested in and mail them asking for such positions so if they have a project and they are in need of students means they will contact you back apart from that they don't put any advertisement for these positions but if you get one of those I can assure you that you can learn a lot in one year and it was definitely going to be highly beneficial in finding the right PhD positions and this is just one lab that I know and definitely there will be many other DST labs or DRDO labs or many other research labs in our country that have such positions but they don't really put up an advertisement on anything so the only thing we can do is find out these websites of these uh, different institutes go through their websites and mail these people scientists or professors mail them asking for such positions tell them that you are in need of such positions let them know so that if they have such positions they'll contact you and be in touch with your professor so that if they come across any positions they, because they will have more connections right they will have friends or 
uh, such prof they would know other professors who are ne in need of students so they'll definitely let you know and be in touch with your friends and seniors so it is very important that you mention your connections because they you never know who will be of help to you at what time so just be in touch with everybody and let people know that you are searching for such position so if they come across they'll definitely let you know and Lastly, what I would like to tell you is do not consider this gap between your MSc and PhD to be a waste. No, it's never a waste. It is in fact the best time that you can actually groom yourself and you can work in these research related fields and you can actually find out if you're really interested in PhD or whether you really want to do your PhD. And also you can understand what field you're interested in. You can try working in some particular field for a few months in some project and really understand if you have that interest towards that field or if you wish to change your field of, for your PhD, you can understand all those things. And it's just a time when you can actually make mistakes and learn from your mistakes like you can learn, relearn, unlearn. All these processes can be done during this gap that you have. So, and you can transform yourself to a better researcher even before starting your PhD. Here. So, that's all I've got to tell you and I hope you found this information useful and if you did find the information useful, do share it with your friends. Thank you.